Hi, welcome to another episode of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the Executive Director of the Prouty Center. And Family Matters is a show where we talk about matters of interest to families with young children. Our last episode, we had the pleasure of talking with Brandy Levesque about positive solutions for parenting. Uh, and it was so great that we, I have asked her to come back today, which thank you so much for being willing to um, to come back and talk more about uh, really, I think, what is such a critical part of our work, which is supporting parents. Right. Uh, you know, we talked about like anybody can be a parent. So what are some things we can do and what something you've been doing as a class um, with Janice Stockman around positive solutions for sort of just knowing how to be with your kid, maybe particularly around challenging behavior, but mm -hmm. that the, the, some of the things you talk about are helpful for anybody to know. It's not, it doesn't have to be that you have a really hard kid. It can just be good parenting or good skills as a parent. So, um, you know, we uh, didn't get a chance to talk. Sort of towards the end, we started to talk about ideas and concrete mm -hmm. um, things that people can do. And I think that's really what I was hoping we could focus on today is right. what do I do in the moment? Right. Like, how do I translate this into actual practice? So um, I think we had talked about household rules, like don't have 10. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> three. Um, yeah. So what's important? Um, so uh, so that's going to be our focus today, and uh, hopefully we will help parents out there everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> or even, even one parent. I'd be happy. <laughs> I'd be happy to help one parent. Right. Good. We ended uh, we, the last episode talking about expectations, rules, consequences, mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. So let's just sort of ground ourselves back in... Um, what are some of the strategies that you uh, see as the baseline foundation for parents to work for from in terms of thinking about, uh, so it's not like a magic answer, have three rules. It's like, why have rules? So what are, so let's back up to, what's the environment? What kind of environment are you trying to, trying to create and how does that happen? So it's really important because we talked about relationships being a foundational component to having a happy, healthy family, but also the environment that we mm -hmm. create is, is also very important. And um, we want to have the rules and be able to enforce rules, but let's try to prevent right. <laughs> rules from being broken in the first place, and how do we do that? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that, um, some of the things that we can talk about are like sort of prevention strategies which right. is, I think, what you're asking about. And then also think about what do we do in the moment when some when a behavior right. does happen. Right. Yes. So um, one really big thing that comes up a lot is having realistic expectations. And I think we might have talked a little bit about that last time. But it's so important that we have expectations for our children that meet um, where they are developmentally yeah. and then individually a child's knowing their abilities and their limitations. So what are they capable of? And when expectations are too high or too low, it leads to frustration for parents, it leads to frustration for a child. Um, and at least in every class, it, or every time we do this series, it comes up, for example, dressing, kids getting dressed uh -huh. by themselves. This uh -huh. is a, you know, this is kind of a hot topic because we, particularly in our culture, want to foster independence in our okay. children and we're busy and we want kids to be able to sort of take care of this. And so for a younger preschooler, a three-year-old, they might be able to get into a shirt or get on their pants, but actually putting all those steps together mm -hmm. and getting dressed from start to finish is a pretty big task. And um, so parents have said, oh, I, well, I laid out their clothes and <laughs> I come back and they're not dressed. <laughs> and that's frustrating when you've got a schedule in the morning, for instance, to get out of the house. So that's, a, that's an unrealistic expectation for a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. So even if they can sort of have the motor skills to dress themselves, they probably don't have the drive mm -hmm. to dress themselves. And if they're surrounded by their toys or you know all these other stimulants, then that's not going to be their priority. Mm -hmm. So a realis realistic expectation would be to set out clothes for them and then support them in getting each step. So uh -huh. start, you know, with if they're, you know, train, potty trained and starting with underpants and mm -hmm. then into, you know, pants or shorts and a shirt. And so we're walking them through that, mm -hmm. a scaffolding mm -hmm. them, and eventually, you know, they'll be able to be independent with that mm -hmm. task. But to just put them out there and expect mm -hmm. them to you know, emerge from their room fully dressed <laughs> at three years old is probably, even four is probably a lot to ask mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, 
there's a sequence involved in that mm -hmm. particular skill. And um, so another piece of that is to offer some other levels of support, like providing a picture schedule or a, oh. a task analysis, we sometimes call it. So it's that like sounds very, very yes, official. Doesn't it? It, it analysis, yeah, so it is analyze what steps come first, right? Uh -huh. So and, and providing those cues to kids so that they can be successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of my favorite parts of, or, or sort of strategies is to provide positive feedback. And we talked about this last mm -hmm. time, sort of mm -hmm. describe and label. So if you really want them to be independent in doing that, and you're scaffolding, you're being right there to help them just above where their sort of independent level is, mm -hmm. then you can provide that feedback. Like, you put your shirt on by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're so independent mm -hmm. or, you know, you're so capable of, you know, taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So providing that, and that's with enthusiasm, you know, that really helps mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. a child um, being successful and families, you know, not having the struggles mm -hmm. involved. So mm -hmm. having realistic expectations, you know, dressing is one example, but mm -hmm. around Whatever, whatever you might, might be, be doing is really important, or, right? Um, yeah, you know, Picking knowing your kid mm -hmm. and and being able to meet them where they're at so that they have success. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of the opposite is true too. If you have, if you're presenting a task that's you're doing too much for your child, so they're mm. um, capable of more than you're allowing of them, that can lead to frustration as well. Uh -huh. right? So yeah, what you had said, you sort of described. Uh, both expectations that are too high and too low, and I was sort of curious, what, what, why, why, do, why does that lead to frustration? It might lead to frustration more on the child's part. Right? Uh -huh. They want to do more for themselves. You know, when they uh -huh. start to get into older toddler uh -huh. world, or you know, toddlers, they they're so they're striving for independence and control over their world. And if you do everything for them, and that might be just opening a package or a container, or you know, I don't know, but that can lead to mm -hmm. them feeling frustrated mm -hmm. because they don't you know get to take care of themselves as much or, mm -hmm. so and in that, it's like a shared goal right yeah. it's sort of like the parent wants their child to be more independent the child wants to be more independent that's a developmental stage to go through and so yeah. finding that sweet spot of where yeah. that aligns to move from seems like we right. have the same goal but right <laughs> your vision of it might be different than my vision right or, and we have yeah. to as the parents provide a safety, you know, a safe environment for that to happen. To so that's part right. of that. Right. <laughs> safe and realistic. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yes, I just had a flash of a bad parenting moment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all good. Um, yeah. Moving on. Um, the, you know, one of the things you had just d talked about, describing labeling and helping name what, uh, what a child is doing that uh, creates value, but, and what I heard you say um, last time was there's not necessarily a value in it in the sense of, you know, the good job, like mm. the, that by naming labeling, like, hey, you did it versus, um, so that they, so that there's internal motivation. I think we touched on that briefly. Yeah. So that it's like, there's a value in the feedback and describing it, but not as a way to um, sort of keep like you, yeah, I don't know, it's the, that well, value piece. We're all driven externally, right? We're motivated by paychecks and we want to, you know, as adults, we want to hear from our employer, we're working harder, we're doing well, they appreciate us and kids are the same way, but we certainly want them to move through the world being driven internally and good job is um, too vague and abstract and it doesn't describe anything mm -hmm. for them. And so that described not even just you did it, but what did you do? And this takes practice to build our capacity to sort of switch um, from just saying good job to describing exactly mm -hmm. what we see that we like. So if we see a behavior we want to continue, we want to just describe it. It's mm -hmm. uh, like a neutral observation. Right. Um, so that helps the kid know what it is they did that you want to keep seeing. And on the converse, you know, another strategy. Or that they might oh. want to keep doing, I guess, is that, you uh, know, we want them to not do it just because we want them to do it. Right. Right. We want them to do it because they ha are understand, like the independence piece, like you want independence? Here's how it happens. Yeah. Here's how I can help you get there. I don't want you to be independent because I want you to be independent. Yeah. So it's sort of that that balance of yeah. compliance, like, not for the sake of compliance, but because here's how we get by in the world. Right. Because and you want to be successful too. Because it's a skill in the world to be yeah. independent and, and to take care of yourself or um, just even yeah. to be driven 
we if we are the drive for our children their whole lives right right for everything what will happen right that does it doesn't and you know there are external motivators certainly mm -hmm. but there's lots of research that also shows that if it's people are doing something just for a paycheck it's not satisfying right so it's like that yes. balance again of how yeah. do we tap into um, you know, understand we live in this world where these parameters happen, but what what do we yeah. want to do? What do we want to be excited about? Right. And so, and there are tasks that children and have to do we have to that do. are not exciting that for are them, not. like getting dressed. They may right. not be. I mean, you right. might. I know some one and a half year old girls, particularly, who can right. dress themselves right. because they're excited <laughs> about it, that's and they right. you know they put those pieces together. But right. that's a little more of a, you know mm -hmm. a drive internally, mm -hmm. and so we certainly want to foster. Um, yeah, children's internal, you know, motivation to and I, be yeah. good. Yeah, you know, and, and contribute. Knowing your child, right? Like, don't trans. Right. That's it sort of always comes part. back to relationship. Right. Right. You know, mm -hmm. whether you're the parent, how well you know your child, mm -hmm. and that play we were talking about, really, you know, sitting and just mimicking what your child's doing and mm -hmm. just giving them your undivided attention. It's building relationship, mm -hmm. filling their bucket, and mm -hmm. the more you know, the better you know your child, the better you're able to have realistic expectations mm -hmm. for them and mm -hmm. help that shared goal you're talking about help mm -hmm. move them in a direction mm -hmm. that's you can see they're motivated in mm -hmm. yeah so. okay so realistic expectations yeah and how to have them what else can we um, um, think about in terms of prevention and response one thing that comes up a lot also which is kind of um, me it's a strategy and it can be a prevention strategy and it also can be a response mm -hmm. and that's to stay calm in the moment you know if you're I think I like to um, differentiate a reaction and a response you know uh -huh. when you have a reaction to a behavior or a situation it's really coming from it's kind of the your sort of very primal being I think we talked about that a little bit last mm -hmm. time but so you're reacting mm -hmm. it's just what it says and you probably or often reacting means it's out of emotion mm -hmm. and you're probably not thinking clearly and a response is something where you've had time to think it through mm -hmm. and pick something that's you know say the next thing you say that's going to be more likely to lead to success for everybody mm -hmm. involved so um, staying calm is a strategy that we talk about in class and then um, we sort of ask parents sometimes so like which one do you identify with and which one do you want to for which, whatever reason whether mm -hmm. it's a strength for them or an area to work on and mm -hmm. a lot of people you know, want to work on staying calm mm -hmm. because um, one thing I'm not sure we talked about and certainly not enough about is not energizing um, negative behaviors. Mm -hmm. We inadvertently reinforce those behaviors. So when a child has a behavior and um, we get upset about it, maybe we lose control a little bit, we're giving them a big um, reaction mm -hmm. we're sort of showing energy for that and then they're likely to repeat that behavior but we're also modeling for them um, you know how to respond to a problem mm -hmm. by losing control mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know kids learn a lot by the models that they have mm -hmm. around them so if we're modeling this behavior of losing control or getting really upset and frustrated and not handling ourselves well then mm -hmm. we can expect to see that out of them as well so staying calm in a situation it takes a lot of effort. We, we're always trying to teach young children, preschoolers, how to <laughs> calm down, and you know, before they, re, you know, before they react. And as adults, we need to do that too. So, taking a taking a deep breath in the moment and not putting a lot of energy into the behavior mm -hmm. that you just saw, but just getting, you know, it's a pause, mm -hmm. so you can get your head thinking straight mm -hmm. and how to then pick a strategy that might help mm -hmm. your child be successful mm -hmm. and then you can have that cycle of giving that positive feedback and help building their internal motivation to be mm -hmm. you know the best they can be mm -hmm. um, so you know just giving the, whatever that behavior is the minimum amount of attention the mm -hmm. negative behavior and if a child's not hurting anybody, hurting themselves, breaking something, you know, safety isn't an issue, then you have time. Mm, you have time point. to mm -hmm. like breathe. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think we talked last time where you noted like, these are life skills, right. right? And we can do this in our own as, you know, with other adults that we are involved with as right. well. Right, so right, right. I get that, I just, you know, it's worth noting that 
what we're trying to develop in young children yes. are skills that take them through life and help them be successful. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of families want to work on staying calm. Mm -hmm. It's hard when kids it sort is. of misbehave. And, right. Um, I, I think parents often feel like it's a reflection on who they are and how they parent and right. did they do something wrong right. or, you know, and, and if you have a child who does, isn't just sort of just typical behaviors, but has challenging behaviors, mm -hmm. it's a real, mm -hmm. it's really, really hard to, mm -hmm. you know, navigate right. <laughs> through and, that role And my guess, uh, right, we react in the moment um, and it's so, you know, what have we seen? And what's been modeled for us so yeah. it, you know it's on that but that the fact that it's both levels of yeah. um you know we're trying it's like we know how we tell kids to stay calm all the time and don't forget to breathe and then i see him and as adults we're like yelling and being right like, <laughs> so it's contradictory so just it, it many times it is not an emergency and to just take a breath yeah. and and even to name like you know what i'm really up I'm feeling a little upset and I'm just going to take a minute before we talk about this is really powerful. It is really powerful. Oh. We talked about emotional literacy mm -hmm. a little bit last time and, you know, social emotional um, skills and development and helping kids learn to understand like, you know, there's happy, sad, mad, but there's also this whole slew mm -hmm. of other emotions that, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's kind of sometimes really finite differences between them. And so if we practice, naming our feelings mm -hmm. and, and model how to respond, you know, in the converse of being, losing control and overreacting yeah. in that way, we can also say, I'm really frustrated right now yeah. because, you know, I asked you to put your shoes on and you're not doing it. I'm mm -hmm. gonna take a deep breath and mm -hmm. calm down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take two deep breaths <laughs> and calm down, <laughs> right. you know. But that is really, really important because it helps mm -hmm. them understand um, and builds their emotional mm -hmm. literacy and their capacity to mm -hmm. use those skills. Like when a problem comes up, we don't need to lose control. Right. We can calm can. down and solve it. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think naming it is important. I just had an experience where I, I, you know, I took a break or I like, I was really upset. I walked out of the house and I didn't say what I was doing. And it came up later that my daughter thought I was mad at her for something. I was mm. like, oh honey, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, like I needed to just take a break. Yeah. It had nothing to do with you in yeah. fact. So I think that is really important at whatever way is appropriate, you know, not yeah. to overshare necessarily, but to make sure that kids know, I don't right. know what, what we're doing and why. So. Yeah. And again, you're, you know, you don't have a preschooler now anymore. No, no and so we're still these. practicing parenting. <laughs> right. This, is, right. this never goes school. away. You know no, what? I'm still you know, working on it. Old enough that I should not need my mommy so much. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> no. I do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Good. So stay calm. Stay calm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just, we talk about realistic expectations. Another piece of that is stating your expectations ahead of time. Oh. So that has a couple of different um, ways to think about that because both of these things come up. So stating your expectations is a way of priming your child for a situation when um, you know we're going to your friend's house, we're gonna stay for an hour, and mm. when I say it's time to go, I expect you to, you know, stop playing, pick up the toys, mm -hmm. and put your coat on. Mm -hmm. So kind of giving them um, an idea about what's going to happen and what you mm -hmm. expect out of them. Um, that can, it's a really important when you're going into, also into settings like the grocery store mm. or um, a restaurant or a place mm -hmm. where there are certain kinds of behavior expectations that we have. And so we want to set them up for success by telling them ahead of time what mm -hmm. to expect. Um, and another part, this comes up a lot, is um, you know going into a store like Walmart or where kids want a toy, they want right. everything, right? <laughs> it's like, can I get this? Can I get can this? Can I get yeah. this? Can I or the grocery? Store? Can I get this here? Can, so, mm -hmm. if you state your expectations ahead of time, it helps kids know, um, and and it may not completely extinguish or um, prevent any yeah. of that. Yeah the gimmies, you know, mm -hmm. but it can help because like before you're going into a store sometimes, you know, we might be going to shopping and for a, my, a ch one of my kids friend's birthday party. So we're buying a gift for mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it's like, can I get something? Can I get something? And, <laughs> and you know, at 11, it's like, <laughs> we're going into the store right now. So I, you know, I still use these strategies. Um, we're going in the store and today we're just buying something for your mm -hmm. friend. This is a trip to buy something for right. your friend's birthday. Right. So you know, some parents will buy their child something in the store, 
lots of times. When my kids were little, we'd yeah. go in a store and, and yeah. um, I all, always feels easier too if you're if you make your decision up ahead of time mm -hmm. rather than in the in moment, the moment right. being you know being pressured by your child to purchase something mm -hmm. or you sometimes we do it to keep them quiet in the store mm -hmm. because you're in public and it can feel embarrassing when mm -hmm. they're having a tantrum mm -hmm. and people don't know you or know anything right. about your <laughs> skills as a parent so stating ahead of time how things are going to go mm -hmm. and um, and even sometimes. If you say, you know, if we we get through the store again, stating your clear expectations, without you crying or fussing mm -hmm. or you know, or I like, you know, we try to state things how we want them to be. So we want you to be quiet, use an inside voice, stay with me the whole time, either in the cart or holding my hand. And when you do that, at the end, I'll buy you. You know, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get the lollipop or the little toy or something. Mm -hmm. So letting them know how it's going to be. And then that kind of gets tricky because it leads. That into, sounds like a setup. I have well, to it say, can but, be a know. setup, but so if that's if that's how you people do do that, and so that comes yeah, up in the parenting your, class, like how do and and it's okay. How? I think it's, um, you know, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. You just uh, and we were talking about the rules. I, I don't know why I'm so uh, focused on what are our household rules, but if it's you know three things you want to remember, mm -hmm. same thing in that scenario, like. Here, here to you know, give them a big long list of be quiet and da 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 da. And at the end, you're like, wait, what did I say I would do? Yeah. And the kid's like, wait, what was I supposed right. to do? Well, what, how am I so supposed if to? you're going to use that strategy, um, you know, keep it contained to what you can keep remember. Your, keep the real expectations realistic, realistic right? right? Like they aren't going to be able to remember right. all those things and probably do all of those or things, all of right? Them. We right. often talk about like an attempt at doing a skill or a behavior is worth noting mm -hmm. because they're learning. Um, mm -hmm. you know, how to mm -hmm. do these things. They don't mm -hmm. know them already. So, um, yeah, you, you don't want it to be so difficult for everybody to sort of mm -hmm. keep it together that they can't. But if you've said you're going to walk with me and no fussing or, or you're not going to get that toy, mm -hmm. um, then you've got to follow through, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And so, you, you know, so if you've said they're going to get that kind of, that's a little bit of a reward or mm -hmm. that gift at the end, then you've got to, do that if they fall through, but also if they if you said that you know they're not going to get it, you have to not get you it. You have to not get it, and how do you line really that up hard. with the yeah spray? Right. <laughs> it's like as a parent. And, and, and no, I think I think what the reason I said it sounds like a setup is because I'm not sure we can be as explicit with our expectations, uh, so that at the end it's not a little subjective, right? Well, <laughs> you know, and then so that yeah. you know fuzzy area. And I think the other thing for me is how. How does that, and I think it's true that some kids need to learn skills by having an external motivator, but how do we, you know, that conversation about how does buy, if, if you do this, I'll buy you something at right. the end, how does it either deplete or fulfill their internal motivation? So, you know, it's, it can be tricky, but I, you're, you know, you're right. It's such a, it's such a widespread yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, and when we're in public, you've mentioned this a couple of times, I think it's really worth noting. There's so much judgment around parenting mm -hmm. and the embarrassment you might feel or yeah. feeling like people are looking at you. And um, I guess to me, like you're feeling OK as a parent sort of trumps everything else. Like you do what you need to do in the moment mm -hmm. to get through and then keep working on all these strategies. Right. You know that we're talking about that you you have room as a parent to keep building your own skills. Yes. too. So do what you need to do to get everybody safely through the store. Right. <laughs> right. I, and, um, you know, and make mistakes because and, that's what happens that's what reality happens. and you know you said oh I was remembering a you know bad parenting moment I mean who doesn't have one or two or ten of those right, right? so it's it's you know we try really hard to sort of lay these things out and do right. them as much as possible but there are going to be times where it sort of slips away mm -hmm. and that's okay mm -hmm. just come back to it and with my own um, children and one of my children who's particularly more challenging um, I know things are going really well. I'm being, I'm, you know, I'm really giving a lot of positive feedback and mm -hmm. remembering to look for the positive in him and not energize negative mm -hmm. behaviors and so forth. But then, as things start to, um, if he starts to rise up with some behaviors, I think to myself, what am I not doing? Oh, I oh, haven't even right. played with him. You know, right. I haven't been able to give him the kind of right. time he needs. Or, mm -hmm. boy, I've been focusing a lot on negative behaviors mm -hmm. instead of the positive. And so, just, yeah. We'll reflect a little and, you know, get back yeah. to it because yeah. we're all going right. to, you know, we're all human and make mistakes. So. Yeah.
Yeah. Just learn from them if you can. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just want to say, I think like a reward system, we use those sometimes with kids in schools, they're right for some kids. Absolutely. And you build towards that internal mm -hmm. motivation, not external mm -hmm. motivation, but mm -hmm. it starts there sometimes. Absolutely. Um, but I'm a big fan of kids earning quality time with you. I, I, you don't want to not give them time with mm -hmm. you. I don't want to send the message that I think you should withhold relationship uh -huh. time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if it's after we get through the store and we, we, ha we didn't really have any problems, then we're going to go to the park and play. So earning things that are not That's like a great point. Monetary, monetarily mm -hmm. related or a, like a mm -hmm. material item, but earning mm -hmm. time you know, to do fun mm -hmm. things. Like when you when we get through the store quickly because everybody's mm -hmm. behaving we'll and falling, to. we'll have time to go mm -hmm. to the park or go mm -hmm. for a walk or whatever that, you know, mm -hmm. go swimming or fishing or whatever it is your child likes to do with you. Mm -hmm. So I like to build towards those things especially. Right, which I think, again, might tap into the internal motivation because we get back to the relationship. Yeah. They want quality. We all want quality time with each other. Yeah. And so, um, and maybe it's, you know, and this is, I think, uh, and we're not going to have time to talk about today. It's amazing <laughs> how we can, you know, take up so much time with yeah. this stuff because it's important. Um, the... You know, what's a rule, a consequence, a natural consequence, a mm -hmm. punishment, a reward? You know, those are very tricky t things. Yeah. And so, you know, the reward of getting to spend time in the park versus, wow, a natural consequence of we ran out of time. I'm sorry, we can't yeah. do that right now. You know, like, you could play it either way. So I, But I do appreciate what you're saying about um, it gives the structures and sort of concrete things to think about to work towards or... Uh, yeah. understand that we value yeah so yeah and I think kids I think that when we're not building towards material things all the time mm -hmm. it's okay sometimes mm -hmm. you know but if we're not building towards those all the time we're building an internal drive mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. you know being our best selves rather mm -hmm. than external and you know I think maybe to frame it another way the basic assumption that people want to be good yeah people want to be with other people I mean you know of course there are outliers and yeah um, but for the most part if we start with that assumption uh, so kids too yeah. kids are people like I, I think you want to be good I think you want to be with us and doing they stuff do. so. they're not sometimes teachers or parents feel like they're like out to get us and they're doing mm -hmm. this and they're not they're yeah. out to get our attention right. for sure but they're not like right. having these behaviors to right. really like you know, hurt us right. in a way. Like, we want to be together. Mm -hmm. Kids want, you know, and then if they've learned to that your attention comes when they're doing negative behaviors, they'll right. sort of repeat those. Yeah. So they do. We are mm -hmm. driven to be together for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. So we have just a little bit more time. Is there uh, one more thing you want to make sure people know about positive solutions for parenting before we end? There's one more strategy that parents can do to, I think, that's worth talking about, and that's offering um, reasonable limited choices. Ah. This can be used as a prevention strategy. So whenever we, you know, whenever we can prevent a behavior from occurring, we want to, and sometimes this is a good way to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a really good one when a kid, when you have a, when you have a, there's a task that a child, you know, has to do, mm -hmm. but probably is trying to avoid, like bedtime, uh -huh. <laughs> right, or bath time or mm -hmm. something. Um, so if you offer some, like a limited a choice, they can um, have a little bit of control over the mm -hmm. situation, even though the, it's like you're going to bed. It's right. bedtime no matter <laughs> what. Time. So maybe it's which, which you know, pajamas do you want? Your mm -hmm. you know, Lightning McQueen pajamas or your shark pajamas? <laughs> you know, or uh -huh. who who would you like to read you a story tonight, mommy or daddy? Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing, so that they're having some level of control, mm -hmm. and it does really help kids mm -hmm. comply with um, that sort of have to mm -hmm. um, and you have to offer a choice that's that you can follow through with right and you and and not and and often just two things this cup or this cup uh -huh. versus which cup do you want right. because what if the cup they want is in the dishwasher and it's <laughs> running and you can't have it you're setting yourself up because you can't right. follow through so I think um, it builds kids ability to make decisions as well mm -hmm. and have control because mm -hmm. we're not born decision makers. Mm -hmm. So when you offer limited, you're, not, you're, you're giving them a way to mm -hmm. follow through and be successful mm -hmm. with direction following and also building their skill of, um, you know, being a decision maker and like living with the consequences mm -hmm. of decisions that we make, mm -hmm. which are, which is a really important mm -hmm. skill mm -hmm. capacity to learn. Good. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, so we are out of time. Thank you so much. I think these are some really helpful strategies. And who knows, maybe I'll have you back for a third okay. time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>